Hi, this is Chris from Music Radar, and we're here just outside Northampton at Black Star Amps HQ uh, with Bruce, the technical director of Black Star, who's going to talk us through the new ID series. So when we were looking at producing a range of lower cost but still high value for money amplifiers, um, we kind of realised that digital technology was sufficiently developed these days to allow us to produce a range of products that would redefine people's expectations in terms of both the technology that's used itself, the price that they have to pay to uh, own these products. Digital technology these days is very, very widespread. I mean, it's the it's analog electronics in general. I'm not just talking about guitar amplifiers, but in general, uh, is kind of being replaced in a lot of areas by digital technology. And we're all kind of aware of all the things in our everyday lives that um, are now, you just expect it to be digital based. And we saw no reason why we couldn't achieve a new standard in performance from digital-based technology. I mean, if you think about it, just about everything uh, is digital-based in terms of uh, audio and video these days. As an engineer, it's always been a bugbear to me that the performance of digital amplifiers in general, certainly up to this point, um, has always been kind of disappointing. It offers a huge, it sells a huge dream, you know, you get all these amps and all these effects, and it's all integrated in one box. And all the big players in our game are doing that. Um, but when you actually try the thing out, it's always a disappointment, despite the, you know, the very clever marketing that's done, and there is a lot of clever marketing done, um, we thought it's got to be better than this, and that was the kind of uh, starting point when we set up on the project. Tell us about the TVP feature. Um, TVP is a unique um, solution to a problem that Blackstar developed. Uh, the problem being that I think kind of everybody knows that if you have a 100 watt valve amplifier and you crank it, which everybody does really, finding their neighbours uh, uh, fairly reasonable about it, um, a 100 watt valve amplifier pushed will always sound considerably louder um, than a 100 watt equivalent solid state amplifier and there's lots of speculation and kind of um, rubbish talk to be frank um, but it's pretty straightforward really that they actually it, what a speaker likes in terms of developing volume is volts across the coil rather than power so a power rating isn't necessarily a, an indication of how loud an amp's going to be uh, and the tvp solution was designed specifically to address that at the bottom end where we all like a bit of thump and bottom end and as you shelve up towards the top end um, this system just delivers more voltage across the speaker where it's safe to deliver that's the important thing to say um, allows speakers much more efficient at low end so you can put more power in without any risk of damage or burnout of your speakers or anything it's exactly the same way as a valve amp works and kind of we all know that uh, whether it's a 100 water or a 10 water, uh, the valve amp usually always sounds considerably nicer. So looking at the TVP control, we've got six valve selections on there, and those models behind each of those selections are very intricate and quite expensive in terms of compu computational power. Um, but we were determined that rather than have a control that just simply had a little bit of EQ here and there, and varied it from one valve type to the next, we were determined to model the entire output valve transformer and speaker load that's connected. So as you go through these valves, we're doing a number of things. We're changing the damping, which affects how much resonance you get at the bottom end, and how the presence lifts at the top end, uh, and the point at which non-linearity, which is distortion, uh, occurs. So those are very accurately modelled. Uh, and it's not just a question of I'll put a bit of EQ on here that I won't mm. put on the, you know, I'll, I'll take less bottom end on the KT88s, 
Mon 34 it wasn't done like that, it, they are accurate models for the actual valves being used. The voice control is really um, a combination of all things Blackstar, um, rather than kind of um, produce generic, this is a clean, this is a crunch. Um, because of the range of products that Blackstar have already developed and our kind of twist on conventional um, reference standards, we decided that we'd include the basis of all the different voices that you'll find on any of our analog amplifiers. Um, we thought that's a good starting point to develop the voicing on this. Um, all those products are good in their own rights and it's kind of bringing them together in one um, collection. Uh, and it's just, again, it's kind of versatility. It's um, what some people like, maybe somebody else would prefer something different. So it was just bringing the whole thing together and obviously with the uh, feature of programmability. Um, if you decide that you want to change, if you want to vary something, uh, it's all recallable and selectable. So this is obviously a project that you've been involved with for a number of years now. What was the biggest challenge sonically? It was making sure, I think the biggest challenge of all was just making sure that it was worthy of having the Black Star name on it. Um, we are very proud of what we've achieved with this uh, development programme and the subsequent range of products that we're producing from it. Um, there is a lot of um, misinformation as we kind of think of it as, as regards to what makes a valve amplifier sound the way it does, uh, why do digital amps sound the way that they do and kind of, as I say, we're all musicians here um, but we're also in terms of the R&D department, engineers as well and it was combining the two things together to make sure that we could redefine people's expectations of what digital processing can deliver in terms of guitar tone. Um, there's lots of people who play guitar, there's lots of people inside the engineering team who are very good at listening to things and voicing them and being very, very critical about it. And the nice thing about working on this range is the amount of uh, flexibility in terms of adjustments to circuit parameters or algorithm parameters, uh, adding bits and pieces in to do some very fine, almost subtle, in fact they are subtle, but I think it's the collection of subtleties together um, that is an important factor in the way that the ID series works. But I guess it's those, you know, those subtleties, that top couple of percent, those are the things that make a difference when, when it's at volume. You know, because I think we, we've all used digital gear before and it's often a criticism that when you turn it up, that's when it fails. You know, they're great for recording, it's great to have this range of sounds and, you know, so much yeah. sort of tweakability, but it's when you turn it up in a room with a drummer, that's when you yeah, really yeah. hear the difference. So, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's that, it's that top sort of 2% maybe that makes all the difference, do you think? Yeah, yeah absolutely, because I think, you know, you mentioned the... Uh, take it down to the rehearsal room or you go down to your local gig uh, and you start playing with the drummer and that's when you kind of, you might have played it for hours in your back room or whatever, uh, but it's when you actually get it into that proper gigging position that you'll find out whether it's going to work or not and that's the thing, I think that's the thing that collectively as a team we're most proud of, that this is actually a usable, very good sounding, very flexible gigging amp. Thanks Bruce, that's great. It's uh, Chris from Music Radar and we're here at Blackstar HQ in Northampton.